tension on the force right now is significant. I know they've been gone for two, sometimes three weeks at a time, and then they come back. There's just, there's no time. We've got to start back up again. I need you to get back. There are almost 2,000 pilots short. There is no shortage in the work that has to be done. It just has to be done with fewer people. We're making the mission happen, but we're having to do it very often on the backs of our airmen. How do you take an organization that is brilliant, they are world class, they are the best in the history of mankind, and they start seeing the signs that they need to do something different. So in our business of national security, where our job is to fly, fight, and win, our job is to be prepared for the unexpected, our job is to win no matter what, we better be masters at this game of innovation. Back when I was flying the F-22, it became readily apparent to me that we had a really limited ability to train against emerging near-peer threats. Platforms like J-20 or Su-57 coming out of China and Russia, it was very difficult for us to simulate them. And if you're not capable of training against the kind of aircraft you will encounter in battle, you are underprepared. Augmented reality can fix this. However, current augmented reality technologies are only suitable for use in an indoor environment. It has not been possible to use augmented reality outdoors in fast-moving dynamic environments until now. We have a team of multi-talented individuals in our collective experience in fighter pilot training and tactics. Emerging technologies like virtual reality and augmented reality allowed us to make a massive breakthrough and create a solution called ATARS. ATARS is the Airborne Tactical Augmented Reality System, and that was the key foundational technology that we built that it allows us to basically put virtual airplanes up in the sky that real pilots and real airplanes can fly and maneuver against. The Air Force understand the same problems that we identified. So they've been working on a system called Live, Virtual and Constructive. Live means real pilots in real physical aircraft. Virtual means real pilots on the ground in simulators. And Constructive is an AI-driven synthetic asset. And all those three things collectively are an LVC ecosystem. It is undoubtedly the way of the future, but there's a major limitation. What happens when those entities enter within visual range? Well, the whole training system collapses. I look up from my tactic display and there's nothing to see. That is the weak link of the LVC ecosystem. We've designed a system that allows you to look up once you break that within visual range barrier and start to actually dogfight against synthetic bandits that we're putting up in the air. ATARS completes the LVC ecosystem by allowing a high field of view, full color, reactive target inside any within visual range environment. We have solved within visual range LVC. We've logged over 350 hours in augmented reality with the ATAR system. We've demonstrated it personally to over 50 members of the United States Air Force and United States Navy. So this is a, uh, a Burkut experimental. Uh, the Burkut is obviously the, I guess, the pinnacle of experimental canard aviation. It was the evolution of the Long Easy. Um, so uh, based on the Burt Rutan design, Dave Ronenberg obviously took that design, evolved it. So it's about a third bigger than a Long Easy. This one is mostly carbon fiber, um, way stronger. Um, it's uh, obviously a retractable undercarriage. Um, and uh, this particular one is, is pretty special. So this is uh, the, the lightest, most powerful, most capable Bokut in the world. I think there's only around about 13 of them flying right now. Um, but this, uh, this has a, a really incredible story. So some fun facts on this one. It's a strength and main spar, stressed to uh, 15 Gs. I'm definitely not stressed to 15, 15 Gs. Gs. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's uh, it's a molded wings, uh, all carbon fiber, uh, some glass in there as well. So it's very light, very strong. Uh, so the Burkut comes in two engine formats, right? The 360 and the 540, which is the bigger engine. This is the 540, but it's kind of a super 540. So the standard 540 engine puts out about 260 horsepower. We had this engine custom built by Lycon, so it's throwing out, uh, I think, a smidge under 350 horsepower, something like that and it's allied to a uh, custom-designed Cato propeller on the back. They're the three-bedded constant-speed propeller. 
Um, we did have the, um, the previous woman's constant speed on here, which was optimized for top end. And we saw speeds of like 264 knots out of this airplane. So really fast. It doesn't go as fast now, but it climbs better because we switched it out for a climb propeller, which kind of suited our mission profile a little better because we were up and down all day really quick and top end that, you know, we were never really getting there or using it. So uh, the climb propeller is way more efficient. Oh, the cockpit itself is uh, extremely modern, entirely glass. There's not a flight instrument in here, as you can see. We based it around the uh, the Dynan Skyview HDX. I went backwards and forwards on between this and the Garmin G3X. They're both the same. Aligned to a uh, Garmin GTN 650 as well. For uh, it's fully capable of IFR shooting all the approaches. Uh, a Garmin G5 here is a backup flight instrument. The uh, I forget what this one is. The GT uh, the GMA 245 audio control panel here. And then I use the Dynan uh, radio and, and autopilot function here aligned to the uh, the Dynan Skyview system. And you'll notice the throttle and and the stick top. They are all custom made. We literally machined them. Uh, the, well, this is actually out of a, um, I think it's a A10 stick top, which we ripped apart and, and rewired, and it's all fully integrated hotel system now. So between all of the levers on the throttle and the stick, there's some ATAR Same. screen. That's it. But uh, I have the ability to fly the airplane, control the airplane, control all the radios, the autopilot, everything just from the stick top. And I can also control ATARs from the stick top and the, uh, and the throttle. Uh, yeah. Internal fuel tanks, next to all fuel tanks in total, we uh, carry, I think about 86 gallons of gas. The airplane is capable of throwing gas out the back at an alarming rate, but equally I could probably get to Chicago with a wing tank. When I'm up there and trying to save gas, I'm, I'm down below five gallons an hour, so it's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's pretty awesome in terms of getting it back. You can see here's all the scenarios there. So I use this as a it's a simulation of a tactical display that we'd have in like an F22 or an F35. So I can have it. You can see the range rings three miles or ten miles and stuff like that, and you see all of the stuff driving around. So if I and this gives me position of the cursor. It's not active right now. Position of self relative to a what we would call a bullseye and then I can cycle in and out of this so if I want to just look at things in front of me I go like that and then if I want to look at things like around me I can go like that and then the way I would drive this is so for example there's the tanker see flying around I drive this cursor over and then I click you see it goes white and when I click it's it's saying it's like you know four to five miles away right two o'clock um, and it's at four thousand feet four miles bearing zero two seven um, but then when I when I insert that in the shoot list, that's when we get the green target designation um, circle in the head of display, which basically says look over there, and then you go, oh yeah, got it. So it's a mean of it's a it's a means of aiding a visual pickup of the target, basically. Gotcha. Uh, and then I control all of my you know, stuff. This. You can make the green circle disappear as you want. As I did, just by clicking or clicking again, okay. in, insert out. So, and that's called we'd we'd refer to that as a, inserting something into the shoot list. Yeah. So yeah. Make sense. Indeed. Thanks, Dan. Yes, sir. Um, I will take care of the canopy for you. So, if you remember back in the days of the original Top Gun, you had the good guys in the F 14s and their instructors who were pretend bad guys. And the reason they could do that is because the the physical capabilities of those platforms from the, in terms of how they could turn and how they could climb were sufficiently similar that there was positive training value for the, for the quote-unquote good guys. Right. The tables have somewhat turned. The, the United States does no, no longer enjoys the, the overwhelming superiority that it has in decades past. There's a scenario created whereby the first time that a, pilot, a student or a novice pilot or a, a young pilot would come up against their enemy and have to fight against them would be in combat. Yeah. And that is generally frowned upon because the idea is you, you train how you fight, you fight how you train. But if you can't train against this thing, then then there's there's an unnecessary amount of risk created in, in the environment of actual combat. So how to fix this? We created the world's first environment which allows you to sit inside an aircraft, take off, look outside the window, and see other assets. For the sake of argument, see an enemy aircraft that you can engage against or see a friendly aircraft that you can train with. Multiple different scenarios are possible for the sake of argument. You could have mid-air refueling scenario, you could have formation flying scenario, you could eventually have ground attack scenarios. We had a key technical solution for an acutely defined pain point. And that was very important to the US Air Force, which is one of the reasons why we very much been, shall we say, their augmented reality baby. 
uh, they they backed us from very early stages. We said that small amount of money you give us, we'll give you a solution in six months that'll demonstrate A, B, and C. And they said, no, you, you're never going to be able to do that. We're like, okay, give it to us. They did, and we did. And they said, whoa, that's interesting. Let's do more. And so that's that's basically what we've been doing. We move quickly, and we that doesn't mean we always succeed immediately. Absolutely not. The point is to, uh, shall we say, fail fast and iterate. Obviously, failing fast means something very different in a startup like this than in a software startup. You have to still be very careful with, with safety, obviously safety paramount. We're not just putting external parties into the aircraft, we're putting very important assets into the aircraft. So every single flight is, is the most important flight so far.